on their home turf in Osaka, they're known as chapulins. Outside of Mexico, they're called fried, or toasted, grass hoppers. And they make pretty good, salty, and spicy beer snacks. You can buy a 4 ounce cup for 4 bucks at a concession stand called Edgar's Cantina at Safeco Field. The cantina is named for longtime Mariner star Edgar Martinez, who played third base and then became the Mariners' designated hitter for the better part of a decade before retiring in 2007. The safe's concessions sell plenty of traditional ballpark fare, hot dogs, burgers, pizzas, hot wings, sandwiches, even fried oysters and sushi, with local celebrity chef Ethan Stowell on contract to ensure that the food is both high quality and locally sourced. One new vendor this year, a local restaurant called Poquitos, brought in a particularly novel dish, in addition to street-style tacos and tortillas authentic Oaxican chapulins with chili lime salt seasoning. Despite high-profile payers over the years, like Edgar, Alex Rodriguez, Ken Griffey, Jr., and Ichiro Suzuki, the hapless Mariners have never played in a World Series. This year, once again, the team was dead last after the first week of the season, but the fried grass hoppers have been a huge and unexpected hit. In fact, reports Mariners spokeswoman Rebecca Hale, Edgar's Cantina sold 901 orders of grass hoppers in the first three home games. And they're going to limit the number of orders going forward to 312 per game, 312 being Edgar's lifetime batting average. How weird is this? Less than you might think. Start with Poquitos, an upscale local restaurant that's pitched a notch or two higher than most Tex-Mex spots. Ever since it opened, there's been pretty good buzz about its bar snacks, which include a house-made bacon guacamole, fried pork skins and a grilled corn salad in addition to those toasted grass hoppers. They're also selling their street tacos filled with chicken, pork, or pork at the ballpark. Seattle actually has a long-time relationship with eating bugs. And not just grass hoppers and crickets but cockroaches, spiders, and snails. As it happens, the Emerald City is home to an elf and scientific researcher named David George Gordon, who has written some 20 tomes about the benefits of eating insects. Typical title, The Eat a Bug Cookbook. Gordon takes his persona, the bug chef, on the road, retirement homes, shopping centers, TV appearances, and launches into cooking demonstrations with ants, grass hoppers, water bugs, centipedes and scorpions. Beyond the Northwest, though, there's a growing awareness of insects as a plentiful source of food, especially protein. But so far, observers seem to be saying, yeah, sure, insects can feed the world, in theory. Says Dave Gracer, a writing teacher in Rhode Island, cows and pigs are the S.U.V.S., bugs are the bicycles. But it's going to take a while. For those who might still be uncertain about eating bugs, how about if I told you they were gluten-free? Would that convince you? Hmm. Periodically, the concept of insects as food is rediscovered. Entomophagy, the consumption of insects as food, is, a safe and healthy way to help reduce pest insects without using insecticides, National Geographic wrote four years ago. Gathering and farming insects can offer new forms of employment and income, especially in developing tropical countries where a lot of edibles live. Among the critters consumed in various parts of the world, beetles, butterflies, moths, bees, ants, crickets, beetles, locusts, water bugs, stink bugs. Gee, maybe those grass hoppers at Edgar's Cantina aren't all that adventurous after all. Yeah.